U.S. President Joe Biden travels to Europe on a five-day trip that will climax with a meeting of NATO allies. On the agenda, applications by Ukraine and Sweden to join the alliance and the U.S. decision to send cluster bombs to Kyiv. But first, Biden stops in London. Stuart Smith is standing by where Biden arrives in just a few hours. Stuart, what's the mood like there and what does the U.K. expect from his visit? Well, it's just a one-day trip, which is pretty much half ceremonial and half substantive. One of the key things the two leaders will be talking about is something called the Atlantic Declaration, a treaty signed just last month when Prime Minister Rishi Sunak was in Washington, which, instead of having a big trade deal between the UK and US, makes up some of that ground on particular issues that easy agreement could be found on. That includes things like artificial intelligence, defense industry cooperation and data protection laws. All of that stuff that Rishi Sunak, the UK Prime Minister, will be looking for an update on. There will also be a visit for the US President Joe Biden with King Charles, who has a particular interest in climate change. And at uh, Windsor Castle, the two heads of state will be discussing that there. But there is a potential uncomfortable moment for Rishi Sunak with the US president coming to the UK right now because America would like to supply cluster munitions to Ukraine, something the UK says it is and has been for a while against and is part of an international treaty against using and transferring cluster munitions. Here's the UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak speaking earlier this weekend. The UK is signatory to a convention which prohibits the production or use of cluster munitions and discourages their use. We will continue to do our part to support Ukraine against Russia's illegal and unprovoked invasion. We've done that by providing heavy battle tanks and most recently long-range weapons. You know, and hopefully all countries can continue to support Ukraine. In terms of the uh, feeling amongst here in the United Kingdom, most people support the government and those particular weapons going to Ukraine. It largely is following the mood in terms of what people would like the government to do, some even though suggesting the UK should do more. All right, Stuart Smith there in London. Thank you. For more on what the U.S. leader seeks to accomplish on this trip, we're joined now by William Lawrence. He's a professor of political science and international affairs at American University. Thanks so much for your time. Now, we heard there about what, you know, the U.K. is hoping to achieve with this visit. But what do you think is Biden hoping to get out of it? Well, the main thing is that uh, he didn't attend the coronation of, uh, of the king, which is kind of a faux pas. He sent a family member instead, and he... Um, uh, needs to do that. In, in past coronations, the U.S. president has always tried to attend. Uh, in addition, uh, there are a number of things the U.S. can coordinate with, with the U.K. on. Um, the U.S. is asking for uh, the U.K.'s help uh, in the uh, Sweden Swedish accession to NATO. Uh, and uh, there's an agreement for Biden to meet with Erdogan at the summit in summit in the Vilnius, and the U.S. thinks the U.K. can help leverage a little bit the conversation with the Turks. Uh, there are a number of other, uh, you know, smaller economic and technology-related things, but not much can happen in one day. On the topic of NATO, uh, it's not just Sweden, is it? Biden and NATO allies are likely to give Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky a sense of what uh, he will have to do if Ukraine wants to join NATO membership. What do you think that list might look like, and how far off are we talking? here for Ukraine? Well, I think Biden misphrased it when he said uh, uh, Ukraine's not ready. I think what he means is NATO's not ready. And it's really hard when a country's at war to then uh, have them join an alliance in which every inch of their territory must be defended, particularly when something between 15 and 20 percent of Ukrainian territory is currently occupied by Russia. So you're basically saying that 31 countries have to join a, a war with Ukraine to liberate uh, that 15 to 20 percent of the territory immediately as soon as they join. So that's the main issue. Um, I think that uh, um, there are, you know, normally a number of steps, just like with EU accession or any sort of accession to an international organization that Ukraine would have to go through. But, uh, you know, given the stakes uh, for NATO of the Ukraine war, um, Ukraine would be on a fast track once things are ready in NATO. And the main thing that would need to happen for that to happen would be uh, a peace treaty, an end of this war. And then I think Ukraine would be on a fast track. In the meantime, 
Uh, the U.S. is going to make uh, security guarantees. Uh, uh, Biden interviewed in his uh, interview uh, uh, aired this morning on American television that he'd like the U.S.-Ukrainian relation, security relationship to be like the U.S.-Israeli security relationship in which all types of security assistance and security guarantees are there uh, to protect that country without uh, entering an alliance. And, of course, the support is shown by this delivery of munitions to Ukraine, one that has become rather controversial. And in his visit to the U.K. today, speaking to Sanak, how can we understand the sort of ambiguity between the different perspectives around munitions or these particular munitions? Why does the UK see them as a problem and why does the US not? So 133 countries have signed the convention that says these weapons are bad. And those 133 countries are right. Uh, what's worse is Ukraine losing the war. And Ukraine has run out of uh, munitions right now. So the question is what to do. Uh, do you go with these uh, munitions that cause threats to civilians by leaving uh, bomblets all around the, the fields and, and towns that could explode at any time, which is the reason these, these weapons are bad? Or do you do something else? My own feeling is that the NATO long ago should have been much more actively engaged in, in recreating and updating the uh, Ukrainian Air Force, because if Ukraine had a proper Air Force, uh, they could quickly achieve uh, with, with an establishment of air superiority over their own territory, what these cluster munitions uh, are to be used to do, which is push back the Russian troops. So, you know, it's, it's a question of weapons versus weapons and trade-offs. But I think, you know, personally that the, uh, a proper air force is a better way to go than cluster munitions. All right. Professor William Lawrence, thank you for your time. Pleasure.